uh, herpetologists na hindi lang mga Pilipina Pilipino kundi mga ano rin, mga nasa ibang bansa na ang, ang diversity ng amphibians and reptiles natin ay napakataas. Pilipinas nga, we at, now we have about uh, at least a hundred species of frogs. Although we believe uh, after all this research, uh, ongoing research, eh, mas malaki pa yung total diversity natin. High diversity of species in the Philippines does not end with plants and frogs. Rizal's work in Bohol's Raja Sikatuna Protected Landscape has given her inside knowledge on the number of different bird species that inhabit this island. Here in RSPL alone, you can find about 130 to 150 species. And Bohol is just one island compared to, you know, if you compare the total islands of the Philippines. So I could say that it's really diverse. Bohol Island is also a good place to look to find evidence of the Philippines' world-famous marine biodiversity. We had a, uh, a survey of the, in the Bohol Marine Triangle, which is about 35,000 hectares, and they found something like 6,000 species of mollusks and related, so your shrimp, your crabs, and related species. And I asked the head of the expedition, what does that mean? Well, he said the Mediterranean Ocean is 300 million hectares, and they have 3,000 species. We had 6,035 thousand hectares. So you can see, and that's only a fraction of the island of Bohol. What if we take all of the other islands together? Whether coming from rainforests or reefs, scientific data seems to be leading experts to the same conclusion, that life forms in the Philippines are very diverse. But what excites biologists about the Philippines even more than its diversity of species is the fact that more than half of the plants and animals here are found nowhere else on Earth. I asked my students before, I asked them, what makes you proud that you're a Filipino? And then they would give me, you know, many answers like, okay, I'm Filipino, I'm tanned, or I'm, uh, I live in a country with many cultures, with many languages, with beautiful islands, beautiful places. But then I showed them something else. I told them that in the Philippines, you have one of the highest endemisms in the whole world. You have 50 plus percent of your vertebrate animals endemic or unique to the Philippines. With more than half of its mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians endemic, or found only here, the Philippines is home to the greatest concentration of unique biodiversity on the planet. And it's something to be proud of, because in other countries, let's say in Spain, or let's say Brazil, Brazil has only 26% of their species that are endemic. And Brazil is many, many times larger than the Philippines compared to you know, compared to us, in a way they should have more species that are endemic to their place. But no, talo natin sila. We have 50 plus that are endemic, are unique. So it's amazing. Uh, it's actually beyond words. If you can just imagine how small the Philippines is and how many endemic species are found in here, it's amazing. Even more amazing is the fact that many animal and plant groups in the Philippines have well over 50% of their species endemic to the country. Philippine frogs are a good example. We have about at least 80% 80 uh, 80 na endemic sa Pilipinas. Ano siya eh, uh, sa bawat makita nyo na sa bawat sampo na makita nyo na klase ng, ng uh, Palaka, eh, Walidon, eh, sa Pilipinas lang, mga Pilipinang mga klase. An even higher level of endemism is seen in a group of mammals called cloud rats. Rats, eh. Na usually ang connotation ay kadire, madume, peste. Uh, yung itsura ng mga cloud rats ay basically malaman lang kahawig dun sa mga daga na makakita natin sa mga siyudad. Uh, 
at mga rice fields. So these are beautiful na mga mga daga, ang gaganda, kapal ng balahibo at hindi kamukha talaga ng yung regular na na daga. Kasi makita mo hindi lang makapal ang buhok kundi iba-iba rin yung kulay nila, hindi kagaya nung para yung drab na na gray lang na daga kundi meron tong mga reddish orange, iba-ibang shade ng ng uh, browns may mga yung black and white na mga combination. There are six species of cloud rat, and all of them are found only in the Philippines. Like many animals endemic to the Philippines, cloud rats are not found across the whole country, but in just some parts of it. Hindi to nakita sa lahat ng mga isla ng Pilipinas. So makita lang natin sila sa Luzon. Uh, merong isa sa Panay, merong isa sa Ilin Island sa Mindoro at meron sa Dinagat. Maliban doon sa mga isla na yon, hindi pa natin nakikita sila sa uh, ano pa mang isla ng ng Pilipinas. This fellow knows all about living in a restricted area too. Once believed to be extinct, it is the butaan, the largest fruit-eating lizard on earth. Busan is the biggest lizard in the Philippines. Um, it's the only one of at least 60 species of monster lizards that we know of that eats fruit. All the other species of monster lizards are completely carnivorous. It only occurs on the eastern coast of Luzon, Lilio Island, probably Alabat Island, and Casanduanes. There are other animals and plants endemic to the Philippines that are restricted to even smaller areas. The Al Lake on Luzon Island is the only place in the world where a rare species of freshwater sardine called the tawilis is found. Ang importansya ng tawilis, basically, it lies with the fact that it can only be seen in Taal and nowhere else. Kaya, um, napaka-importante ng tawilis um, sa Taal. At saka, ang Taal din kasi ay isang lugar kung saan Para bang pag sinabi mong tawilis at taal, hindi mo mapaghihiwala yung dalawa eh. Remarkably, the tawilis is just one of several vertebrate species endemic to Lake Taal. Another is the Taal Lake Sea Snake, which, despite its name, inhabits the fresh water of this greater lake. Um, itong population na ito ay natrap dahil nagsara ang Lake, lake Taal noon dahil sa volcanic activity and so on and nag-evolve itong population into a freshwater lake um, sea snake. It's a short tale of how one species evolved to suit life in one ecosystem. But a very similar history lies behind every unique species in the Philippines. Their story is best considered in a big picture context. A picture as big as this, in fact. Notice where biodiversity is most concentrated in the world. It is richest in tropical countries and not by coincidence. Consistently warm temperatures and high rainfall in these places allow more abundant life to develop here. Another factor which has greatly influenced the richness and uniqueness of Philippine biodiversity is its geological history. The geological history of the Philippines is very unusual. Uh, most of the Philippines, I, most of the Philippine islands are oceanic islands. They've never been connected to the mainland anywhere. So the species have had to cross over some kind of, an, of a, a water barrier to get here. And their um, uh, gene flow is interrupted and so they become very, very different and particularly over the millions of years. Most of the evolution of the fauna has happened right here. There are not many places in the world that essentially are their own little universe, and the Philippines is one of those places. The islands of the Philippines may never have been connected to a larger mainland, but many of them were once connected to each other. Consider the geological history of Bohol, for example, starting 12...